Now, before we start today's video, I've got one quick question, and that is quite simply, do you pull the ball left or do you in fact slice that ball off to the right? Either way, what we're gonna look at today is a potential issue that is causing both of those problems. And I'm hoping that we've got a little bit of a drill that can help eradicate both of those problems. So today's testing the tips video comes from Kerrod Gray Golf. Now that's a new one to me and someone that's obviously the link will be in the description below of uh, Kerrod's full explanation and maybe a more detailed explanation than the one I'm going to give you today. This is of course my interpretation of Kerrod Gray's instruction. But what he's basically saying is there's two things that can call one thing actually that can cause both of the problems. He concentrates on the fact that it could cause you to pull the ball left, but he also touches on the fact that you could in fact also cause you to slice the ball to the right. And for me on a personal level, the latter is something that I do. And it all comes from the movement I make from the top of my backswing, that first movement. And my first movement tends to be out rather than down and that can be the cause of both of these issues we're going to look at in today's video right now let's hope we can get this one in between the showers here at betsy coed golf club which is just an idyllic backdrop i really love it down here but we've got a little bit of rain that is hovering so i'll make this one short and sweet I've got the camera placed sort of down the line. It's really interesting because most of what you're gonna see is the movement that takes place, like I said, from the top of the swing. What Kerrod explains as being a major issue for a lot of golfers is the fact that when we get to the top of our backswing, we make a movement and that movement can often be out and that is something that i do uh, i've got a real issue with it anybody who's watched the main channel for a number of years will see that something and it's commonly known as sort of casting so you get to the top of the swing and the movement starts to come over and then what that does is start to deliver the club head sort of across the ball now that cross the ball with a closed face or well, what that can mean is that we sort of pull the ball off to the left and that's what Kerrod sees as the main issue I, on the other hand, have got a tendency of getting to the top of that swing, moving out, and then when I come down, I've got a slightly open club face to that path, which is mean I hit the fade. And that's where I said, for me, it's a dual problem that this potentially causes. And to be honest with you, over the years, if you said to me, if I went for a lesson and people asked me, well, which is my miss? Well, my miss is often both. I've got a left in me and I've got that fade and that's all down to whether or not I've got that club faced closed or open through the impact position. But the one thing remains constant is it all stems from that movement at the top. So the question is, and Kerry goes into a lot of description as to what all the issues are. I'm gonna skip all that bit because I know what they are, I think you know what they are, and quite simply, if you do either of those two things, then what you wanna know is, what is the solution? Well, the solution is, when we get to the top of this swing, we've gotta find a different movement to stop us from casting out. The movement should be, when we get to the top, we should start to drop down a little bit. So our immediate movement, rather than out, should be down and start to see the hands and the club shallowing out as we start to make our move forward. And then it's that rotation to release the club head forward. So to the top, instead of coming out, we start to come down, drop our hands down, and then start to rotate. Now what I want you to do is just look at a couple of shots that I played earlier on this morning, just testing this out. I hit a hybrid first shot this morning, and I can't believe, first of all, I'd say how straight it was, but it was also had a slight curvature, and that curvature being a bit of a draw shape, which was really nice to see. We then stepped on and uh, I played a mini driver off the tee and exactly the same, really solid. And if we slow the whole thing down and that movement that I've just made, you'll see that the big difference is like I said, that movement, you can see I start to drop down. So as the rain now starts to come down, I'll get straight to the point and what is it we need to start doing. The drill that we're looking to take away from this and what Kerrod explains is what you need to take to the course or the practice area, sorry, get to the top of that swing and make that movement down in almost a slow motion and then look to release the club head. So we're gonna to swing to the top, we're then gonna feel ourselves down, then we're gonna release the club head. So it's almost, I find this bit almost more difficult to do, but I understand that you've gotta get those feels and that's something I talk about in a lot of videos. 
It's very difficult to translate sort of a movement in full speed because first of all, doing it in, or breaking it down and getting those sort of feels, that's a very different feel for me that I would um, not really be used to. Like I said, the movement is very different. And then as you get to that, you can then start to obviously build that up into a full swing. But what I'm gonna do first of all, is just try and hit a ball down with what would be, you know, whether that's a half swing, whatever you wanna call it, but just get to that sort of, that location and then see if we can sort of rotate and turn through the shot so we're going to get to the top we're going to come down and then we're going to hit through and like i said let's see if i can do that in a slower motion if you like so out down i actually found that i caught that ball just perhaps a tad heavy but it still worked in the sense that it was a neutral ball flight and hopefully we got into that position. But I've got to say, whilst I like sort of practicing the drill, swinging to the sort of half position and then trying to generate some power, I almost felt it kind of, it stopped me from getting any sort of fluid motion within my swing. So for me, again, personally, and the whole idea of testing the tips is me to give my feedback on what I thought from Kerr's instruction. First of all, I think it's a real big problem and I think he's right to highlight it. But for me, like I said, I would do practice swings where I'm feeling where I'm at, dropping down and turning and rotating. Love all that. But for me, I'm gonna hit a ball from this position as well. The two shots you see me hit earlier was just me in full swing, but concentrating with one thing in mind and that's when I got to the top of the swing, having a, a conscious mind that what I was trying to do was drop down and drill through the ball and not make that movement out. And that made the significant difference. So we're gonna try one more ball down, see if we can get a full shot while this rain is really now starting to come down with a sort of full swing and see if we can gather a little bit of momentum and pace. And it's a real good ball to finish this video. Well, first of all, what a real good clip that is. I'm not sure of yard, I don't know how far we are away, but that is exactly where I'd want it to be. And in terms of the line, neutral in terms of its ball flight, which is really key, but also a really good clip. I'm working on another video or another tip that we took from Alex Elliott video in terms of the takeaway, which is working really well right now as well. As you can see, that rain is coming down. I'm more than happy with the shots that I've hit and it's only been a few, but the results have been so, so good. Um, I love every bit of these tips. I genuinely feel like it is helping my game. So if you've got that cast motion, just checking your swing right now when you next go to the driving range or on the course, just have a little think. Do you move out a little bit? Maybe record yourself would be my tip as well because it's not something I quite realized I did until I watched it back on camera. And then you think, Jesus, yeah, that is something, that's a movement I make. So if you've got a mate that can just switch the phone on, just get a little bit of a look at your backswing, film it from behind, see if you make that cast in motion. It's really dangerous. Um, like I said, it can have a negative impact both left and right. And that is the drill from Kerrod Gray to hopefully straighten things out a little. Right. I'm going to get soaking wet. We're going to call it a day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Testing the tips is flying right now. Clearly appreciating what is going on. And I'm clearly appreciating the support that is coming back as well. So comments, likes, notifications, subscriptions, all them things. Greatly appreciated. See you all soon. I'm going to get dry.